Hi, my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. Today we're talking to Lee and Paul from the Royal Hotel of Seymour in regional Victoria. Seymour's a little town that's about an hour and a half's drive north of the CBD of Melbourne and they own a pub there that uh, has some stories to tell. <laughs> it's an interesting place so I hope you enjoy this chat. It's an interesting but beautiful place too. It is a gorgeous place. Mm -hmm. The river there is absolutely spectacular. Uh, we really enjoyed our time with Lee and Paul. It was a yes. bit, bit creepy, I won't lie. The uh, building did give off some vibes, a particular room. I remember when I took them photos and the camera wouldn't work? Mm. Yeah, it was weird. So yeah. yeah, some interesting things happened. So we hope you enjoy this chat. We're here today with Lee and Paul. We're talking to them today about some strange goings on at the property. And, um, it's, it was just a really interesting story. So while we were here in Victoria, we thought we would like to catch up with them. Yeah. And they so kindly agreed to give us a little bit of their time. So yes. thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So how long have you been here now? Nine years. Right. Yep. Obviously, you live locally. We live just next to the pub. So what was it about the history of the building that intrigued yeah. you or interested you? Why why was that on your list of right. things that when was... I think just because, I mean, we love old buildings and um, I was a, a history teacher. That was one of my areas and I've always loved history and it's it's just such a great... It can be used as a, a unique selling point as well, Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which we've done. Um, it... This is the oldest surviving building in Seymour. So when did you first get an inkling that there was something more here than what you first bargained on? Well, when talking to the people who uh, who ran it before us, they used to live upstairs and they'd say, oh, you know, we would lay in bed at night and hear kegs being thrown around in the cellar and pots and pans being thrown around in the kitchen and that sort of thing. And we sort of thought, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So we've had staff say, "Oh, you know, I've had my bum pinched and." Oh, really? Sort of yeah. oh, really? <laughs> Actual touching. Yeah. yeah. We were sitting at the bar together. And we had a couple of kids sitting mm -hmm. with us, and um, all of a sudden, a glass went up into the air, turned on its side, and got put on on the bar, uh, which. Ah, uh, that's odd. Kind of, that's... Oh, mm -hmm made us all it wasn't like a bang it was like up and down oh wow. okay um, we had all our house wine lined up at the bar and all the bottles fell off one at a time wow um and there was no one anywhere near them um, and these are things that you were both there for yeah. you both saw yeah, yeah. creepy yeah so. and, and again you know bumps in the night and bumps during the day and things like that just just odd things we uh, well leah actually decided that it was a uh, we might just uh, get someone to come uh, from a paranormal sort mm. of um, investigation and just see what they could find yeah as a as a sort of just to see yeah. what would happen yeah. and they got really excited yeah. they yeah. found something and since that time we've had probably three different groups come here yeah. uh, which not connected, not connected yeah. at all and they've actually had similar stories yeah. very okay. similar really? so, yeah mm. Was there a time where you thought, mm, maybe we shouldn't talk about this publicly and we'll just keep this as our little secret? It's out there. We don't yeah, have we, we we it The Woman's Day. Woman's yeah. Day. <laughs> it must be true. We oh, did an yeah. article and, and we are the, one of the most haunted places in Victoria. Wow. So, wow. Well, well it's, uh, you know, that's, that's according to Woman's Day. I'm not sure how extensive their survey was. Right. Where, but you didn't know any of this uh, when you bought no. the place. Uh, one of the other things that that used to happen even before we did the paranormal investigation. We had a little bell mm. in the bistro on the bar, but this bell would ring. Staff would go into the bistro and there'd be no one there. But this bell just kept going and, and it was driving everybody up the wall, so we had to take the bell away. So you got rid of the bell. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that didn't channel into something else then? <laughs> um, not, no, not didn't really appear really. to. No, no. All right, so I've read online about room number five. Mm. What's yep. the deal with room number five? So you've got accommodation here, obviously. Yeah, we've got accommodation. Um, we've got a number of rooms that are actually, um, we've had some activity in. Mm. But room five, mm. there was a guy, that, a railway guy. Yeah, he, and he died of a heart attack. Uh, but he lived in that room. Right. And he could see from that room in the early days, he could see right over to the railway. He apparently stands in the window and watches out of that window. Wow. Um, and he's a fairly nice guy. There's also a prostitute who used to work out of that room. Um, 
and uh, she's also in the in there. I'm um, in a party. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, how do you know the prostitutes in there? What? How does she? When the medium comes, he's got all this equipment, ah. and so he communicates. communicates with them, and you can ask using these. I can't remember what they're called. A red light and a green light on mm-hmm. them, and so you can ask them closed questions. Are you a male? And they'll go yes or no, according to the lights on the thing. And he's worked out, you know, who she is. And, and but she hasn't propositioned any of your guests. No, Not a word real. But but, uh, but he stayed in that room. He did, didn't he? And he said there was something in there that was not such a nice entity, mm-hmm. but a spirit spent ages sniffing up and down his body. Sniffing him? Yeah. <laughs> wow. And he protected himself with... And yeah. crystals and talismans and all that sort of thing. But he was like fine trying to find a way uh-huh. in to connect with him or something like Interesting. that. Interesting. But yeah. Okay. So but he's the the medium who comes here regularly, so there is nothing really sinister in this building. You know, up in the ballroom they're having a party and you know, there's some mischief going on, but there's no nothing nasty. Okay, so you have got a beautiful ballroom upstairs. It used to be used <laughs> for <laughs> all the balls in town. Yeah. So dead balls and and you were saying off camera hearings and judicial stuff yeah, and yeah. inquests, court cases, right? Sunday services. The Archbishop of Melbourne preached Ooh. here. Okay, and so there's also an area that you indicated before used to be a morgue and yeah. uh, a police lockup. Yep. Yeah. So the buildings had lots of different lives. The post office, police lockup, and uh, definitely the morgue. And everyone knows it as the morgue. Yeah. Right. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. It's a storeroom now, and it's directly across from the room that we're in now. And the the mediums who have been here have all said that the area of highest activity is between the morgue um, and the window of this building. In front of the fireplace, there's a lot of paranormal activity. Personally, the two of you, what have you experienced here, apart from the bell and the things that you've spoken about? For me, I've not been uh, worried about this place at all. I've been through the whole property. I mean, it does get a little bit scary when you go down in the cellar, what Temple of Doom. Wow. <laughs> yeah. There it is. And the cellar runs from one side of the building to the other, yeah. and it's uh, quite a interesting area. So... So um, you, you've been right through it at night? Yeah, right course. through it. I've not been... I have stayed in every single room in this building. Have you? Oh, wow. Including the ballroom at night. Really? Yeah. There's often in the doghouse. That's that. So, <laughs> I was so, going to ask, but I don't yeah, think I should. This is the biggest doghouse in Seymour. And everybody... Yeah, but it's a pub, so that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, the, and everyone in Seymour knows about it too. It's banished to the pub. <laughs> I mean, all of this aside, it must be pretty cool to own a pub. Uh, very stressful. Is it? Is it really? Yeah. Okay. It's... it's there's a lot of there's a lot of positives, but there's a lot of stress goes with it. Right. Yeah. yeah. It would have been alright if it hadn't been for COVID, and then we got flooded in October 2020. Oh. So. We, as I said, we had the longest lockdown in the world, and then when the flood hit, it was the one in one hundred year flood. So it's so since then, obviously the the economics <clears throat> of Seymour has been pretty devastated. So. <laughs> All right, so you stayed in every room and you've never felt anything that was Not really, particularly... No, um, but in the, in where we where we live, in the house next door, um, that's an old property too. Um, I have had experiences where I've had... I've been on my bed, asleep, and felt somebody come and lay next to me or sit on the bed. Um, I've often thought, you know, I thought it might be the dog or Lee had come up from downstairs or whatever. But it was no one there. It wasn't the lady from room five. Oh, poor. No. <laughs> maybe she did, maybe. <laughs> maybe she followed you home. Well, yeah, yeah well, it was called the love shack at one stage, wasn't it? So when the paranormal investigators come in, they bring all their equipment. They take tours through too, don't yes. they? The, the medium comes um, through Twisted History. Mm-hmm. Um, the company comes. They send one or two mediums um, and they can have groups of um, up to ten that they'll take around the pub and they'll go to different rooms and use their equipment they have dinner here first and talk um they they show the equipment which in this room sometimes works and sometimes doesn't the medium says that there's a group of about three or four guys who stand at the at the door and laugh their heads off because they think it's hysterical that they're all hunting ghosts and they're standing, <laughs> they're right, standing at right the right door there. they've got a good um, sense of humor but they they um they turn off the equipment and they run the battery low and 
all of that sort of thing and you know it'll work and then it won't and make it will mischief and, it won't. and and they say look we've got full batteries they're brand new batteries and everything and now they're flat yeah. um okay um, so you were telling us about you saw a man out in the yes. courtyard have you seen what else have you seen around the place right. yourself we during covid when not a lot of people were allowed to attend funerals we had a funeral for uh, one of our customers a regular customer was streamed here and you know family members came in and um to view the the funeral and I sat sort of um, to one side of the room and I could see the television but I could also see up on the balcony and watching the funeral there and I looked up there and there was someone standing right up there just there like close yes that close and he saw me looking at him and turned and walked that way he was watching the funeral and as I looked up he looked at me and turned around and walked away and I said to Paul, there's someone upstairs. He said, there can't be. And I said, well, there is, because I've just seen them. He's gone, he's just walked off the balcony. I said, you're going to have to get every key and ch check every room, because we've got someone upstairs, and, you know, whether they're staying. And I thought maybe they were staying upstairs, you know, sneakily. So Paul got all the keys to every room, checked every room. There was no one up there. And no one came downstairs because I could see both staircases. Wow. Creepy. So he just disappeared. Um, wow. But at another time I could see someone, I came through, I was walking out of the building and saw somebody, All it looked like he was in cricket whites, but he was taller, um, slimmer, brown curly hair, um, but obviously a different person. Um, and I, I saw him and thought it was a customer, so I walked out of the door and he dodged around behind a shrub. And by the time I got to that shrub, he was gone. And he went into the beer, he'd gone into the beer garden, he was not there. And I thought maybe he's very quickly gone into the outside toilet and I waited for a bit and there was no one come in or out and so I went and had a look in the toilet, there was no one there, just disappeared. Wow. There was nowhere for him to go. But they wow. were solid, it was not like a hazy sort of like... They were there. That he was absolutely there. But, yeah. um, and these were people you didn't know or no, recognise? didn't know. No. So have you ever been able to, uh, apart from the medium telling you about those two people in that room number five, have you ever been able to put name to face, so to speak, as far as an old yeah. publican or someone yeah. who, like a copper of the town or something? Isabella is a little girl who apparently died here of pneumonia and she likes me. She has, has communicated to me via the instrument come with a paranormal investigation and... Um, the medium has said, um, you know, do you like Lee and all that? And, and she said yes. Mm -hmm. But one day we were up there and all my hair, I had my hair longer than this and all of my hair just started to crackle and oh, up, and what? up like this. And it, I, could, I could feel it moving. Like it was just so full of static electricity. And so I got it all onto one side and I rolled it up in my hand and I said to the medium, Jeff, my hair is full of static electricity. And he said, Isabella, is that you playing with Lee's hair? And there was about four or five of these devices in the room and they've got a red light and a green light. And red is no and green is yes. And every device went green. Wow. Yes. At the same time. And usually they flicker or, you know, one works or but everyone, boom, green. Wow. So, um, and then after, after that, I felt someone do this under my chin. And I said, Jeff, somebody has just stroked my chin. He said, Isabella, did you just touch Lee's chin? And all of the devices went green. Wow. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, she likes the so, teacher vibes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But apparently she used to go up to the ballroom and uh, watch all the ladies in their, you know, gowns and all that when there was a ball or something in the in the ballroom. But uh, and she's asked for a ball, so they've taken her a ball and a teddy up there and all that sort of thing. So where does she hang out? She's mostly upstairs in the ballroom. However. We also have what we call the unit, which is a little flat and it's got a bedroom and a, a lounge and a kitchen and bathroom and that. 
and we hadn't been here for very long, maybe about four or five months, and my niece came over and she had a newborn baby and but also had her stepdaughter who was probably about seven at the time and they had her bed like a single bed at the base of their bed and my niece and her partner were in bed and they saw both of them saw um, the little girl get up and walk out of the room she got out of bed walked out of the room my niece's partner said um, I better go and check that she's okay. So he got up and went out and looked for her and she wasn't there. He checked the, the toilet and the lounge room and I couldn't find her, came back in the room and she was in bed. So he thought, oh, must have just missed her. You know? mm-hmm. So he got back into bed, thinking that was a bit strange, and then a little girl came walking in the room and got into bed. So there were two little girls that night. Yeah, but was only one that was real. Yeah, and as well, don't say (coughs) they were both real. They were both real. They're both. (laughs) Do you find that you do that? Like, do you be careful about how you speak and what you say? Yeah, Yeah. I I think so. I think we we respect them. Yeah, absolutely. But but we had a paranormal investigation um, after that, and I said while we were up in the ballroom and talking to Isabella I said Isabella were you the little girl that slept with Zena when she was here and every device went green Mm. so it was apparently Isabella Isabella but we've had in answer to your question we've had other paranormal investigators come and I've said just don't upset them look we everything's nice here everything's everyone's happy mm-hmm. there's nothing sinister there's nothing angry just don't upset anybody just be respectful of them mm-hmm. with the paranormal investigations we've had two or three that really stand out to me room eight um they had a couple of friends they are a couple who did an investigation with us and we went into the morgue and the male, Dan, he was pushed quite violently. Mm -hmm. Um, But when we went upstairs a bit later into room eight, he, um, there was inside the wardrobe, there was like a scraping sound on the door of the wardrobe. (laughs) And we don't have rats or mice in the building. And we were thinking, what on earth is this? And it was up, it was, sounded like it was coming from up on the wardrobe door. That someone was scratching. We scratching. all heard it. And we were all hearing it. And Dan was saying, you know, do you want to come out of the wardrobe? And um, and they, like, he actually opened the door and uh, we all kind of went, <gasps> but there was nothing there. But it was just strange that, you know, we, they were actually yeah. scratching at the door. That was the only time I've ever heard anything like that happen when you were in the morgue and he was pushed what did that look like he was just standing there and the next minute he fell forward mm-hmm. and he yeah. said i've been yeah. pushed yeah. right yeah. has anyone ever been scratched or apart from you yeah. being touched anyone else yeah. talked about being touched no not really I, people up in who have stayed up in room five have said that the bed's been shaken right um or that you know they have been they've woken up and felt someone next to them in the room or sort of thing <laughs> and these are people that don't know the history yeah. of the place yeah. what about people coming here specifically because they <clears throat> yeah. have heard about the hotel that happens yeah yeah, yeah. we had a group recently they did a, a movie they spent night here mm. and had all sorts of visits we're, we're waiting for that movie to come too so right oh wow. well, can't wait to hear yeah. about that that'll be yeah. good to see but it's strange that paranormal investigators who have come here separate to twisted history say similar things about one night um, when we had a paranormal investigation here we were sitting in room eight and there are other devices that they use so it comes up as a word and sometimes it's very random and you can't make any sense out of it at all and it'll come up you know tree window doctor Mm. you know happy doesn't mean anything Mm -hmm. Um, to you mm. but we were sitting up in room eight one day and um, the psychic said, oh, there's a, a young lady here. 
And so someone said, did you die in the hotel? And the devices with the red and green light went, no. He said, did you die near the hotel? Yes. There's, and there was a, there's a lot of people who have drowned, in, especially in the early days, mm. in the river. Yeah. So I said, did you, did you die in the river? Yes. And into my mind came a story that I'd heard um, and read about. And I said, did you drown in the river with your sister? Yes. Instantly, yes. Oh. And I said, did your dad try to save you both? Yes. Mm. And I happened to look down at these two devices that I had on the bed next to me. And the words, the only words that were coming up were words associated with this, the experience of drowning. So these words that were coming up on the screens were panic, breathless, suffocating, sinking, thrashing, panic. Oh. Like all these words that described drowning wow. and hand on my heart that is what happened and like I just went cold oh, that's so and I was sad reading these words out she was describing to us oh. what it was like for her to drown oh. wow and that's the it's thing too it's 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 you know quirky and people get a kick out of it and all that sort of stuff but mm. generally these are stories linked with mm. real people and you yeah. can trace them back in history yeah. and yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And they're horrific, some of yeah. them. Yeah, but that, that story just popped into my head as well mm. about the, the girls who drowned in the river. Mm. And, but it, the psychic came up to us one day. One, they'd gone down into the cellar. He came up to us very concerned. He said, there is someone down in the cellar who needs to be like, released. He needs to go. Um, he's, he's sort of trapped down there. Um, he was the manager of the pub mm -hmm. and he found that someone was actually stealing um, kegs okay. and or bottles or, or something or something like that or wine or something that they were stealing and he found out about it and he was murdered he caught them in the act yeah. or something like he that he caught oh. them in the act and they killed him oh okay and so he said to us I need your permission to actually let him go and we said yes. So he did this whole thing downstairs. Uh, he laid on the floor with this guy for some time talking to him and let him go. And so did you have any uh, history of any of anything supernatural before you came to the, the hotel here? Back in Adelaide, where we came from, um, my father passed away. Um, we were, my mum, my brother, his wife and I were standing in the lounge room and this hazy spinning ball it looked like a sort of it was almost it wasn't solid mm. but it came down through the house it came between us and it went around and around and around and then just shot off wow that was a bit strange but we also had um a squeak that followed us around and we mm. always said it was paul's mum a squeak oh, followed you. Yeah. Right. I know oh, it sounds weird. Tell us about the squeak. Uh, yeah. Was that when you were here or previous? Both. Uh, both, yeah. Okay. Both. She came with us. So, um, yes, yeah, so what, what used to happen was um, my mother passed away and when I came back, from, uh, she was in England, I came back to Australia um, and then all of a sudden I, there was a, a squeak manifested itself from I have nowhere I've got no idea from what or where. It sounded like a little dog toy. Um, the dogs wouldn't respond to it at all. Even though they, they would get very excited about squeaky toys. Yeah, yeah. They, but they didn't respond to it. We were the only ones that could hear it at the time. It would, it would come when I was out shopping. It would be when we were out for the day or, or if we were having it in the car or... Went we to a restaurant. Went to a restaurant. It'd be, it manifest itself... At all sorts of times. So initially you were checking your shoe. And I thought it was an alert on his phone. But then the squeak would be there even when I didn't have my phone with me. Or, um, yeah, I mean, it was just a bizarre thing. And it travelled with us all over the place. Prior to my mum passing away, some years previous to that, we went to the Flinders Rangers, walked. My mum was, you know, pretty old, but 
We walked to the top of St Mary's Peak, which is quite a high part of the, the high, one of the highest points in, in the Flinders Ranges. Yeah, you know, we did did the walk and we came back down and fine. So when I came back, I took a you know a memorial photo and from her funeral with her picture in it and the story. And I decided that she always loved Australia and didn't really want to go back to England. And she loved the bush. So I decided I'd take this memorial card up on top of St Mary's Peak, got it right at the top, found a really nice spot, made a, a little stone can, put a, uh, a little note in it about my mum, took a photograph yeah. so I know exactly where she would be looking. But then sometime after that, we went to, to Central Australia and then came back through the Flinders Ranges. This is way long time after. Up on the right hand side was uh, St Mary's Peak and I just waved, hi mum. I'm a squeak, went off in the back of the car. Wow. The <laughs> squeak so was back. It was just a weird thing. Yeah. You know, but and it's not been here for a long time. But, it's, but it uh, did come with us. It did come with us. And... But it, like when we were back in Adelaide, I bought Mother's Day flowers and we were sitting having coffee and the squeak came from over where the flowers are. Mm. And we had her great-grandchildren stay with us and Paul was showing them the aquarium and the squeak happened right behind the children. And yeah. it was just... It, it just yeah, it was just a breed. I think strange. also I hear with your stories and you mentioned it before too that you that story came to mind about the girls drowning... Mm. I think, and I don't know research about this stuff, but I think that there's a way that they can imprint something mm. and make you think mm. of something relevant. Yeah. Yeah. And there must have been a reason at the start that you put the squeak and your mother together in yeah. your head. Yeah. You know, it, it, yeah. it was just, because it's... It just didn't make sense. You know, it was just something that we, you know, as I said, it just happened. So we put the two, two together that, you know, when I waved to my mum up on St Mary's Peak, then where I left a message and... Wow. Yeah, she let us know that she was there. So apart from the bed shaking and you having someone lie down beside yeah. you over in, in your residence, has anything else happened there with the dogs? Only the, the, you know, the dogs, it's, it's a big open space and there's a mezzanine floor. And so the dogs will sit downstairs and both of them will be watching, up, looking up into the bedroom area upstairs and they'll be watching and both of them, their little heads will go and their eyes will follow someone in sync, in, in sync and then down the stairs and then up the stairs and around. And it's like they're both watching the same thing moving around over there. Oh, and there's that's nothing there. creepy. Yeah. <laughs> the other question I had that I didn't send through to you, but it's only just occurred to me, have you got security cameras here and have they ever picked anything up that wasn't supposed to be there? No, no not really. Um, but what we have had is we've had um, separate investigations. People have come up here privately, mm -hmm. set up their special cameras, you know, proper mm -hmm. ghost hunters. And they'll be there and they say, yeah, we've got photos of this and pictures of that and this is what happened. And, okay. Yeah, so it's, um, they've, they've gone away going, re getting really, get, you know, really excited about what they'd seen and what, there's another group that came, they stayed upstairs and they had, they were in every single room upstairs. I mean, they were staying there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and then we've had some that refused to go into the rooms. Interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Okay. We've had but, cleaners who have had a particular aversion to certain rooms. and. But we've actually had, remember yeah. the two, the, the women? Yeah. The, so they, the, wouldn't stay. they wouldn't stay. They had to, they moved and stayed in a different room altogether, no. stayed together because yeah. they wouldn't go in the room that was well, allocated to them. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't feel like that about any area here, not, not apart personally. from the cellar being yeah, dark. Yeah, I mean, and, yeah. yeah. But I mean, so apart I, from that, it's. Um, yeah. As I said I've, I've stayed in every room, uh, including the ballroom, uh, overnight, um, and pitch black and whatever. I've mm -hmm. never felt any kind of, um, you know, I've been frightened or fear or anything like that. I mean, I'm. I've heard noises and creaks and stuff like that. But, yeah. The only yeah. time I've ever felt um, a bit frightened was I was up in my office and I've often heard, sitting up there, I often hear footsteps and people who have stayed here have said there's footsteps going up and down the hallway all the time. It's wooden floor. But I had the door shut one day and it was getting colder and colder and it's a long, narrow room and 
I sit at one end with my back to the door that's at the other end of the room. And uh, it was getting colder and colder and colder. And so I thought, I'm going to turn the heater on soon. And Paul came into the room and I said, oh, it's freezing. And he goes, it is cold in here. And while I was talking to him, I put my hands under his armpits. <laughs> so I took all my hands up. Um, when he left, I went back to work and it, well, he said to me, do you want me to shut the door? I said, yes, please. So he shut the door. It's got a deadlock on it. And uh, I carried on working. and But I was sort of facing to the side. So I could see the door in my peripheral vision. And all of a sudden, I heard it unlatch as if someone was coming in. I thought Paul was back. And the door just swung open. <laughs> and <laughs> I thought, oh, gosh. <laughs> There's no one there that I can see. I either sit here with it or I run through it. And so I ran through it. I ran downstairs and all the hairs on my arms were oh. standing up. It was just, I was, that was the only time I was really scared. There was another one, another time, um, actually I think it might have been the same night when that we were talking to the girl who drowned. We went to the ballroom and I still had these devices. Um, I was holding them, the ones that come up with the word and we went to the ballroom and nothing was happening and we were about to leave and one person said I wonder if you played, played some religious music whether you know that would make anything happen so the psychic said well I can do that and he put amazing grace on his phone mm -hmm. and suddenly the woman next to me fell to her knees and I thought mm, okay and you're never too sure whether these things are staged by the person, you know, I'm having an experience and I'm yeah. falling to my knees and whatever. Um, but, uh, and another woman, she sort of stood there with her head down and I looked down and I could, on these two devices, words like faith, hope, grace, devotion. Churchy words. Everything wow. to do with, you know, religion mm -hmm. came up on on these two devices the only words that were coming up were all to do with you know with yeah. peace love you know hope charity mm -hmm. you know everything like benediction everything like all these words wow. all to do with and i was reading them out and everyone was sort of going Whoa. the woman who had fallen to the floor onto her knees said that she was actually pushed to her knees and she said my, I tried to raise my head at one point and my head was pushed down there was another woman there who was standing with her head down and she I had noticed that tears were falling out of her eyes faster than I've ever seen anybody cry before like just tears just falling um and she said she could feel people praying over her like staying standing around her Mm -hmm. um, and she said, you know, she she could really feel these people, and that, um, you know, she was she had quite an emotional experience. experience.